The Ballad of Ahmed Shah by Rudyard Kipling. This is the Ballad of Ahmed Shah dealer in Tats in the Sutter Bazaar by the gate that leads to the gold miner, how he was done by a youth from Mwarir. Ahmed Shah was a man of peace, his beard and turban were thick with grease. His paunch was huge, and his speech was slow, and he swindled the subalterns high and low. Scores of subalterns came to try the tats that he sold, and remained to buy. Scores of subalterns later on found that their flashiest mounts were gone. Some in the front, and some behind, some were roarers, and some went blind. Scores of subalterns, over their weeds, cursed old Ahmed and all his deeds. But Ahmed Shah in his gully sat still, and ever he fashioned a little black pill. Yet a judgment was brewing for Ahmed Shah, like a witch's cauldron, in far more and the youth that brewed it has eyes of blue, and his cheek was beardless, and boundless too. Softly he mused o'er a tricky, thick by the beard of the prophet I've got the trick. Then he rose from his chair, with an artless grin, and called the battery sergeant, in sergeant, he said has taught for me, in the way of a caster, with lots of g the sergeant pondered, and answered slow there's a red roan gelding, that's bound to go at the next committee. He ain't no use except, for kickin', recruits to the deuce, he's chained, in the sick lines. The subaltern's brow, was puckered with thought, for a moment. Then the sergeant was richer, by rupees ten. When the next committee sits, quoth he, O sergeant, buy up that brute for me. So the plot was laid, and the long weeks passed, and the red road gelding was duly cast. They led him in chains to the subaltern's stall, and gave him his gram through a hole in the wall. The subaltern mixed it. When morning came, the red road gelding was strangely tame. He bit not nor kicked, nor essayed to slay and he, and the sub went north that day, till they came to the gully of Ahmed Shah, the man and the horse, from far water. The subaltern stated his funds were low, and he came Merbani, to sell Karo. Then Ahmed Shah with his eyes, Agog broke the tenth command, in the Decalogue, for the roan was a monster, in size and thews, and stood over sixteen hand, in his shoes. Sahib Kitna Mankta, with brow serene the subaltern, softly answered teen. He haggled an hour, that dealer thrifty till the price, was lowered to do sow fifty, and the money was paid in greasy rupees, while the red roan gelding drowsed at his ease. The subaltern left him, and Ahmed smiled by Allah, how mad is this pink-faced child I, will stuff that gura with it and gur, and sell him again to some English sewer, for a clear 850. And e'en as he spoke the devil they'd drugged, in the red roan woke, then the head ropes, snapped and the heel ropes, drew and the stallions squealed, as the roan went through, and the syces ran as men, run for life and the yard, was troubled with equine strife, till the berserk rage of the beat was o'er, and he dropped to slumber, at Ahmed's door. Then a veil was lifted from Ahmed's eyes, and he raised the eyelids, and punched the thighs, felt the tense pulse slacken, the muscles still, and fathomed the trisic of the opium pill. His own old dodge, that had brought him pelf, had the subaltern turned against himself. Did he swear though his, three best tats were lame, and half of the city, would hear of his shame, did he seek the law courts? With downcast eye he hailed an echo, that jingled by, and drove to the station, where filled with peace, the subaltern counted the greasy rupees. What passed between them? I cannot say, the subaltern turns the question, away with an innocent laugh. But the men of Mwarer, say he still gets ponies, from Ahmed Shah. Ponies to bet on, but not to buy, weeds to look at but devils, to fly and once in a while, comes a tiny pill box. The doctor abets him, whenever I'm able I plunge, to my last clean shirt, on their stable.